Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Hi, this is my uh, Tentac Jupiter. This is an HF uh, transceiver. Uh, it is uh, mid-range and a very nice one. I happen to like it very much. I've had it for a little over 10 years. Uh, let's look at some of the functions. This is the power switch right here. Uh, it turns the whole thing on and off. Okay, it's fundamentally a computer inside, so it has to boot for a minute. Now here's uh, the volume control. Okay, so we're listening on uh, 80 meters. Now the next most important knob is the tuning. See, as we tune it, the, the uh, numbers just go up. It doesn't look like a radio dial anymore. And you can pick uh, particular uh, steps that you want by pushing on this uh, step down here and picking whether you want to go up or down in, in you know how fast the thing moves. The next most important item is the band switch here where we switch between the bands. It's 160 meters and then it comes back around to 10, um, 12, 15, uh, 17, uh, 20, and uh, the 10 megahertz band, which is 30 meters, the 40 meter band, uh, the five frequencies that we have in the 60 meter band, and the uh, 80 meter band, which sometimes uh, the high end of that is referred to as 75 meters. Okay, now there are different modes. Let's see if we can tune in that uh, station again here. Okay, now we've got the modes. You'll see the mode indicator right here. It says lower sideband. We can toggle through the modes CW, FM, AM, upper sideband, and lower sideband, which of course is the one that works here. Now, if we want to tune the thing in exactly, let's change our step um, back to uh, um, 100 hertz come right down on it there's a little receiver incremental tuning knob over here which when you turn that on uh, just get that signal tuned in just right now reasons you would want to do this is if you're transmitting on one frequency and your partner starts drift you don't want to chase them down the band the thing also has um, on the screen here it can uh, has a split VFO right now we're both transmitting and receiving on this one but sometimes when you work DX stations you want to work split so you can have two frequencies in here transmit on one receive on the other this little indicator right here is called the S meter it tells you how strong the signal is in relative terms an S9 signal is considered very good and as you can see they are coming um, through much more uh, strongly than that. If the signals are too strong there is an attenuator that uh, cuts down on the incoming signal a little bit. Uh, the box is you can just talk into the microphone without pressing a uh, push to talk and the tune button just turns the transmitter on a little bit so you can tune your antenna with the antenna tuner that's up top. There's also an auto notch right here that if you hear a single tone it will cut that out for you a noise reduction which is a digital noise filter now in your controls down here you have the audio also the RF gain normally you run that a hundred percent unless the other guy is really really strong but sometimes you will want to cut that down now some of these other features in here are kind of unique uh, to different radios not all radios have them Passband tuning is a way of cutting out some of the interference. 
Uh, here you have an AGC, you toggle through uh, fast, medium, and slow on the AGC. You can set the key speed for CW. If you really want for FM, you can put a squelch in here. Uh, this is the side tone, the monitoring level, and so on. Now these uh, down here allow you to use memories. You can put a frequency in the memory if you want to get back to it very quickly. The mic gain adjusts the uh, gain of the audio circuits going out so you are not uh, causing a problem with uh, distortion. The power level, you can set the power level uh, in here anywhere from 100% uh, which is 100 watts on this radio. Uh, and if for some reason you want to work with very low power, it says zero percent, but there's actually a little bit going out. So that's why we would keep a uh, dummy load for that. And um, if you, uh, so we talked about the mode switch, the band switch, the reverse. These things have to do with the two memories here working split, which I very rarely do. As little indicator when the transmitter comes on, another indicator if you're overmodulating, that little light comes on and tells you that it's too much and the radio automatically uh, cuts back on it. Uh, this particular radio has control over the bandwidth, the received bandwidth, uh, so that you can get right in on the signal that you want. This is an extremely nice feature. Passband tuning is controlled here in the multi knob. It depends on which of these that you push. And that's about it for a quick basic tour of the Tentec Jupiter radio. Now we're looking at a handheld radio. This little radio right here happens to be an ICOM. It's an IC7 uh, T7H FM transceiver. This is a, a 2 meter and 440. It's a dual band. And uh, we can turn that on. Um, by pressing the power switch. I have so many handhelds I forget which ones are which. Now this uh, you can operate with uh, memory controls here and you'll see the different uh, uh, frequencies that I have in uh, various memories here. It will uh, also tune in to uh, the local weather station too and and you can hear lots of different things. Of course, you can only transmit on the ham bands. Now, those are the memories. I've got different memories set in here. That's very, very handy for repeater operation. And uh, you'll note here it says 147195. That's the repeater in Cedar Edge. And if I press the transmit button, it transmits at uh, the frequency of the input and that's the frequency of the output. Now that repeater happens to be out of range for this little handheld so I think we're okay. Now if you want to use this on the VFO you push the VFO mode and then you can punch in the frequency that you want. Let's say one, four, six, uh, five, two, zero. Now that happens to be the national simplex frequency uh, for people just going uh, uh, radio to radio without using a repeater. And you can punch in a frequency that you might want to listen to, like the weather station or something like that. So there's no knob that turns very much. However, you can go up and down in frequency by simply turning the knob up here. There's two knobs. This one is the volume. This one uh, changes the frequency. So you can go directly to the frequency by punching it in or by turning the knob or by putting things in memory and changing the memories back and forth. This also has the power, uh, or the capability here to set the power. Uh, high level is when nothing is indicated and um, let's see I was in the memory at the moment. Let's go back to VFO. Um, if I push this the little low indicator comes up there indicating it's low power about half a watt and its high power is 5 watts. Uh, if you want to hear what's on a signal to make the squelch go away, you can push that button right there. And sometimes a signal will be squelched, but if you, uh, it can be somewhat intelligible if you do this. Like most handhelds, it has a little lock feature, and the lock feature allows you to set it so that punching any of the buttons won't cause it to change until you unlock it. There's just a simple uh, button on the side, push to talk, and really that's about all there is to it. 
the battery uh, on the back. There's a place in here to uh, put in external power. And if these are rechargeable batteries, you could put a, a charger in there. This particular radio uses just double A's. Up here at the top, we have a place that you can plug in both a speaker and a microphone, which is uh, sometimes handy. It's also a great way to uh, hook this to a computer for uh, various digital modes. The antenna comes off, can be replaced by another antenna. This one uses a BNC connector. And uh, very easy, just a little quick turn like that, and it's locked on. And so there you have it, a typical FM handheld. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.